Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your reading for the week of March 28th. Uh, we're just going to jump right in here, Aquarius, and see what is going on for you at this time. And um, that's going to be that. <laughs> I really have no other announcements um, other than thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, but we're going to jump in here and see what's going on for you. Again, I'm, I'm not going to clear. I'm going to clarify in this reading. I'm not going to do a second part this week. Uh, just don't have the time this week, but uh, that's all right. And uh, I'm using the Prisma Visions Tarot if you're wondering what deck this is. You start off here in your current general energies with the death card. I do feel that something needs to change here. You have the Wheel of Fortune as your crossing energy. Um, <laughs> having the death card and then the Wheel of Fortune basically as your crossing energy is like not allowing a cycle to come to a close or not allowing something to end. So I do feel for some of you, that there is a need for you to either like allow something to end. You know, I kind of get this energy of like needing to be excited about the future or, you know, kind of looking at the future with more excitement in general. I do feel like I'm an Aquarius rising and I totally feel this energy for you, you know, Aquarius. Plus, you know, I'm born only a couple days into Pisces personally. So, you know, I'm pretty close to Aquarius in general. And so I definitely feel this energy. I do feel like there's a lot going on for Aquarius that could be making you feel a little bit less hopeful for the future, if that makes sense. And again, I don't think this is like a bad thing. I feel it, like I said, but I have to kind of like remind myself that, you know, I'm in control of my destiny and you are in control of your own destiny. And I feel that this, that's what this reading is saying. Literally the wheel of fortune is a card of taking control of your destiny. I don't want to leave this just yet, but you have the wheel of fortune here. And again, the wheel of fortune, we kind of want to be at the center of the wheel. When we are at the center of the wheel, that's when we kind of really take control of our destiny. That's where we can control our outcomes. Things are always changing when we're at the center of the wheel, but we can see those things as they're spinning around us. When we're on the outside of the wheel, things are just happening to us. And I feel like this card is saying, don't do that. The death card, normally there's a child that is holding a flower up to the death rider. And the child kind of represents someone who is just not afraid of change. So I kind of feel like this reading is asking you to embrace that inner child excitement. You have two pages here as well, which would definitely be that kind of inner child energy. It's like in the area of your thoughts, I feel very grounded energy here, obviously, with the page of pentacles, really excited for something new. And this is definitely a good thing. Uh, so I feel like you're ready to plant seeds. I feel like you're ready to learn about new things as well. You're ready. It's like you're ready to change your life is <laughs> basically what I feel here. In your foundation, you have the page of cups, a lot of dreamy energy and things that you need to grab onto. I feel that you're this. there is kind of like a little bit of a disconnect here uh, between the page of pentacles and your thoughts and the page of cups and your foundation. It's kind of funny, uh, just like in my head, I feel like those two things should be reversed. Um, you know, I don't really feel there's like an order that cards have to come up in or anything like that. Just in your energy, I feel, you know, I feel like the energy should almost be reversed. Like you should have the grounded energy on the bottom in the, um, you know, page of cups, dreamy energy in your thoughts. A again, yet yeah, like, I, I don't think that it has to be that way. I'm just saying in your reading, I feel like it should be that way. Um, because it's like there are things that you're dreaming of. It's almost like saying your foundation isn't solid because it's a page of cups. Page of cups doesn't really exist. He's holding that cup out in front of him normally, and there's a fish in that cup. But again, the fish doesn't really exist. It's something that is in his imagination. He needs to ground it in reality. Uh, even your next card, well, the, not your next card, but in the area of your near future, you have the Queen of Wands, which really tells me that there's like something, there's something that would maybe, you know, I don't want to say make your life more complete, but I feel like there's something that would maybe make your life more grounded um, that you are trying to go for, mm, you know, and I, I just think you have to go for it. In the past, you have the Six of Wands, card of success. I kind of feel like some of you are looking at past successes in general. And, you know, I, you know, I get this weird feeling on, on this card here, and especially with the Wheel of Fortune as your crossing energy. Again, in this reading, you go Six of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune crossing energy to the uh, Queen of Wands, just kind of, in, again, in my intuition, you know, my intuitive feeling about this is that you could be looking back at time, like feeling like you um, you know, lost out on an opportunity to be successful. It could be in work, in business. I get this feeling of kind of like going up and um, feeling like you, you kind of like missed out on some momentum, some upward momentum. I'm trying to come up with like a good example <laughs> for you. It's like, you know, imagine if you were trying to build a YouTube channel 
and you're getting a bunch of subscribers and something happens in your life that takes you away from YouTube and then you're going back down. I'm not suggesting you're starting a YouTube channel. I, the only thing I know about in life is YouTube. So that's that's why I always use it as an example. It's like I get that feeling of almost like something kind of like getting in my way, if that makes sense. And I'm pretty sure I've said this to you in recent readings. Uh, it could be that Wheel of Fortune. The thing is, is that in the near future of the Queen of Wands, Queen of Wands is about being bold, being assertive, really going for something. This Queen of Wands comes up for a lot of people right now. I do feel that in general, you know, that it, people should be more bold, more assertive, and I feel people should really go for things that they desire. The thing about the Six of Wands and the Queen of Wands is that they can both represent criticism from other people. On the Six of Wands, traditionally, there's a person who's looking at the guy on the horse, and that person is meant to look jealous or envious. They kind of have like a face, you know, about them, <laughs> a jealous face. Queen of Wands, you know, as I always say, she has a black cat in front of her. Around the time of tarot, black cats were considered extremely unlucky, and so she, she just loves the cat. She doesn't care that it's lucky or unlucky. She just likes the cat. She doesn't care what anyone else thinks. So there isn't like an energy here of really needing to not care what other people think which again is something that I feel has been kind of repeating for you uh, like off and on uh, throughout the readings. And again, we're gonna clarify in just a minute in this reading and we'll see kind of like if we can get more detail there. Uh, over the next few months, you have the King of Cups. I kind of actually like this because the King of Cups is about exploring your emotions. He is maybe experiencing negative emotions. Um, he is experiencing all sorts of emotions. He just doesn't let those emotions get to him. He understands how to work with his emotions. He has great, there's great depth to his emotions as well. There's like all these layers, right? He's meant to look like he's in the deep ocean. There's a whale normally behind him, even though it looks like a fish, and it just represents his deep emotions. So I feel for a lot of you, you're like kind of exploring your emotions. I do also feel this could be love coming in for you. And again, a lot of people have been getting the King of Cups. It could be a water sign, but as I've been saying to everyone, I just think more right now we're talking about like archetypes and as far as like who you're going to be attracting into your life. And again, it doesn't matter what gender you're attracted to. I just think that for whatever reason, we're like in this weird time, right? <laughs> everybody, I'm sure everybody can agree with that. And uh, I feel that we're kind of, again, I think we're going to be more attracted to a certain archetype of a person, not necessarily like, oh, this is a, you know, a Pisces or a Cancer or a Scorpio or something like that. It could be, but, you know, I feel like we're going to be more attracted to people who are emotionally stable, people who have great emotional depth. Again, he sometimes can come off as having no emotions, even though he has great deep emotions. He just understands how to express his emotions, like in a healthy way. So I feel a lot of you might be just more attracted to that type of person. Uh, next in the area of your closest relationships, you have these six of pentacles. I'm getting the word rebuilding. Um, you know, I, I feel a lot of you could be kind of rebuilding some relationships in your life. You could also be learning like who you can give to and who you should not be giving your energy to with this six of pentacles. Uh, again, doesn't really surprise me based off your astrology. I think that a lot of you have probably been learning this just in general. We had all that energy in the sign before you, Capricorn, and all that energy in Capricorn you know, it has a lot to do with balancing out friendships, the types of people you allow into your life, who you give energy to, who you don't give energy to. Uh, again, I get this thing about time here, which I feel like I've said to you in the past, but it's like maybe you feel like you were, you've given time to things like people, six of pentacles, who don't deserve it, and you haven't given time to people who actually matter in your life. And again, number one, don't be, beat yourself up over this. It's like, to me, as long as we learn these lessons, it doesn't matter. We can correct it. We can fix it. There's no reason you know, to feel guilty or anything like that about it. But again, I feel like some of you, it's like you could be kind of looking at that. You could be saying like, wow, I've given time to situations that really just don't matter in my life and there are other situations that do matter more and it's like, why do I pay so much attention to things that don't matter? Again, we all do this. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like some of you are just kind of trying to balance that out. Uh, next in your future feelings, uh, hopeful. I'm getting the word hopeful on this high priestess. That's not really what the card represents, but intu I read intuitively and I'm just getting the word hopeful here. I feel like you're feeling hopeful because there are probably like a lot more opportunities coming in for you. She is like the card of potential and so she can represent opportunities coming into your life that have a lot of potential, things that um, maybe they're not fully developed, but they could become something much more significant. So I would trust your intuition at this time with the High Priestess. And uh, finally, of the Four of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles is like a lot of stability. It's like you're gearing up here. Um, you know, Four of Pentacles to me can be like kind of a good card, bad card situation. Uh, but for you, I kind of feel good because I get more of a feeling of preparation. 
I get this feeling like you're about to uh, start doing things that you've wanted to do. It's almost like, it, it's kind of weird. This is going to sound weird, right? <laughs> um, you know, these cards have much different imagery than a traditional tarot deck, but I'm just noticing all the, the imagery here, it's all going towards the future, this part of the reading. Uh, the High Priestess is walking in that direction. The Queen of Wands walking in that direction. The Six of Wands going that direction. Page, the two pages that way. King that way. It's just interesting to me that everything is m the movement of the reading I would describe as, you know, moving towards the future. I feel like you're preparing here for something. So uh, let's dig into it, Aquarius, and let's see what you are actually preparing for um, at this time. You know, that Wheel of Fortune, by the way, as you're crossing energy could be you. And as a crossing energy, it could say that you're feeling a little bit less like yourself. And so again, some of you, I do get this feeling of like needing to ground myself in this reading. I kind of have this like out of body feeling. And so I feel it would be a good time for you to like do any grounding exercises or anything like that. Uh, with the death card and the wheel of fortune, you have the king of wands. Uh, king and queen of wands here, number one. So if you're looking for love, this could be a very strong connection. Uh, where there's a lot of desire and also a lot of creative energy as well. You could be creating a family, but you could also be, you know, getting together with a person who you are creating a life with just in general, whatever that, you know, whatever that means for you. <laughs> so a very creative energy. If you are not looking for love, even if you are, I just get a very, like, I feel like that creativity type energy is going to be your best friend. Anything you can do that is creative uh, would be probably a good idea. Uh, with the Page of Pentacles, you have the Nine of Swords. Get out of your head. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, exactly like I said, these two positions should be switched. The Page of Pentacles should be on the foundation. The Page of Cups should be in your imagination. Uh, you know, again, I, um, I think sometimes people think like, I'm just saying that because Page of Cups is more imaginative and the Page of Pentacles would be more grounded. I'd say, no, I don't normally feel like this if I have something like this, you know? So it's a different feeling. I can't really describe it, but I feel like there should be a switch here. And the Nine of Swords is like needing to get out of your head. It's almost like you maybe you need to believe in a little bit more magic, which I feel like I've said to you recently. I've had a lot of these readings that I call Tinkerbell readings. I know it sounds ridiculous, but you know, to me, Tinkerbell readings are it's like if you don't believe, then it's not gonna happen. Page of Pentacles, maybe in your reading. It, I, I don't think it's bad. I think it's just maybe a little bit too logical, a little bit too grounded. I feel like the Page of Cups is kind of like saying, needing to believe that good things can happen, right? But the Page of Cups, you have the Seven of Swords. Again, there's the, the disconnect. Seven of Swords is like lying, cheating, stealing, but Seven of Swords just says, there's another way to do things. And I feel like some of you uh, need to open up to that. Some of you, I feel... You know, you could be dealing with lying, cheating, stealing. But again, as I always say, this is not drama. You know, Oprah, tarot, Kim Kardashian, tarot, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just don't care about the drama. It's like, we, yeah, yeah, we all have to deal with it, right? But so you could have been dealing with that. Um, for some of you in love, I feel like this could be a past love situation that you're kind of like getting over. But again, it just looks like you're moving on to something new. With the Queen of Wands, you have the Four of Cups. Um, exactly what I was saying. Um, I was saying that, uh, I don't remember exactly where I was saying it in, in this area, but I, I think I was saying Six of Wands to the Wheel of Fortune to that Queen of Wands. It's like the Four of Cups, it's like you're manifesting things, but things don't look exactly how you want. And there is a disconnect in your reading just in general, a disconnected energy. Again, she has the black cat in front of her, it's not something that, you know, she could be dealing with people who are like, you know, <laughs> why, why, why do you have an unlucky symbol in front of you, right? The Four of Cups is like manifesting things, but, you know, kind of like not <laughs> at the same time. Uh, everybody's been getting the Four of Cups. And again, to me, the Four of Cups is a card of manifesting steps. It's a card of contemplation and apathy. And the guy on this card, he normally looks disappointed. But again, it's because he's not, he feels like he's not manifesting the things he wants. He is but he feels like he's not. So, you know, for a lot of you, I feel like this is saying that you need to realize that you're manifesting steps. I do feel like some of you, this could be like a little bit of like grass is greener on the other side thing. You could have been dealing with a person in the past where you thought, where they thought the grass was greener on the other side and it wasn't. So, you know, I would be careful of anyone coming back. We're getting closer and closer to a retrograde as well. It will be in May, but you know, I, I realize that we have a whole entire month before we get there, but you know, we're getting closer and closer to that time. I've noticed many times in my life that people have come back like even like a month before the retrograde even starts. So, you know, definitely something to think about. With the King of Cups, you have the Seven of Pentacles. I'm getting the words like, can you rebuild? I feel like that's the second time I've said that. 
in your reading. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I don't actually know what I'm talking about half the time that I'm doing readings, right? But uh, what I would say here is that I feel like you're, it's like you're asking yourself a question, can you rebuild? I always say that the Seven of Pentacles to me is a question mark. Uh, it To me, it's a card that is a question. It's like saying, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? That's the joke I always make with the Seven of Pentacles. But here, King of Cups, Page of Cups, it's like you're dreaming of something that you're emotionally attached to. It could be love, could also just be a dream, as I've said. It's something that you haven't done before because, you know, here's the thing about the King of Cups is he has a boat behind him and that boat kind of represents uncharted territory, uncharted seas. It represents going somewhere you've never been before. I'm getting the word follow through is popping into my head here as well with that King of Cups. So it's like, maybe there is something that you have never followed through on. And now you're thinking like, do I rebuild this? Do I put the energy into it? Um, the, you know, the other way that I would see this is if you have a specific goal, something you're trying to accomplish, it's like maybe you've been working on a project for a long time. Um, I'm getting like several stories here. Um, they're, they're all the same basically, right? Um, the, I, I think the, the idea of the stories are the same. It's like maybe you have a specific goal you're trying to accomplish. You've been working on a project for a long time. I feel like this is saying rebuild, follow through, keep it going, don't quit. Uh, same thing, like for some of you, this could be like um, a relationship. It's like maybe you, you haven't taken it to a certain level in a relationship. And I feel like this is saying, asking you to follow through. It's like, that's what I mean by rebuilding here. And um, but, it, but again, I feel like that could be manifesting in your life, you know, differently depending on who you are. Um, so that's what I'm getting there. With the Six of Pentacles, here you go. You have the King of Cups again. So again, I feel like some of you really need to watch your emotions for sure. I also feel that some of you, there could be a person. I mean, it could be a King of Cups type of person, like I described earlier in the reading, who is kind of like helping you through a time or uh, who is a friend. Uh, could also This could also be love. But again, I feel like you're kind of looking at like what you've given to, what you haven't given to. And there's some sort of disconnect. Again, uh, like I said, I've, I, like, I've made the mistake many times in my life where it's like I give way too much time, effort, and energy to something that, that just doesn't matter. And I completely ignore things that are really super important to me. And I feel like some of you are having that realization here. Uh, with the high priestess, you have the magician. Yep, definitely time to use your powers of mana. This is definitely a new beginning here, Aquarius. I mean, literally, the magician and the high priestess to me is a total new beginning, especially when they come up together. You know, the tarot goes magician, high priestess, but, you know, uh, to me, this is like a very strong need for action. Both cards can represent no action, and both cards represent needing to take action, action on something. The magician really says, like, I get this sense of, like, worrying here, Aquarius. Trust me, again, born very close to Aquarius. I'm also a Pisces. Like I'm a professional worrier. Trust me. Um, but it's like, you know, I, I, I got to a point in my life where I just realized that it's like, if I just worry, it's like, I'm not actually doing anything. Like I used to worry about things that just don't, would probably just never would even happen in the first place. I get that feeling there where it's like high priestess. High priestess, she feels very expansive because she has no roof over her head traditionally. And it kind of says that the sky is the limit. Really, there are no limits for her. Magician, he like wants to create, but again, both cards represent the need to take action. So I kind of get that hesitation here. And again, I feel like I did years ago <laughs> where I was like always worrying about like the next step or like what to do. And I feel like this is saying, like, if you worry, you're just going to worry for the rest of your life. Like I've met plenty of, of other professional worriers and it's like, they worry about all these things and they always bring up these points. Like, oh, if you start a business, you're going to fail. Or if you get into this relationship, this person will break your heart. It's like all these worries and like all this other stuff. It's like, yeah, all that stuff could happen. And of course, does it happen every single day? Absolutely. But it's like, are you going to like live in a cave and just curl up and die? Or are you going to, you know, have some experiences in life? I feel like that's a question uh, that you're asking yourself. Uh, pretty intense. <laughs> With the four pentacles, you have the justice card. Again, if you're worried, justice is your solution. Justice has been the solution for everybody for the past few weeks. Justice is cause and effect. It says, if you're worried about something, it's like, what What have I been saying to you for weeks? Trust the evidence. I'm, I'm convinced that this is the card that's been coming up. It's like, justice, if you put energy into something, do you get energy out? If the answer is yes, keep moving forward. Trust the evidence with the justice card. Um, pretty simple reading. I love this because I feel like you're kind of taking more control of your destiny here. Um, but it's like, you're definitely doing some mm, deep inner work, let's put it that way. But I kind of like where this is going. So uh, thank you for being here, Aquarius. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But uh, thank you, and definitely enjoy your week.